We live today an important Sunday, which closes this little cycle of three Sundays, that the Gospel of John offers us, to make us understand eschatology, of the history of salvation. Started with the episode of the wedding at Cana, continuing with the dialogue between Jesus and Nicodemus. Which today, in the dialogue of Jesus with this Samaritan woman is concluded. And so we prepare to live the time of grace that is about to arrive. To be able to immerse ourselves in what is spirit and in this spirit abide and remain. Here is why I ask you all for attention. I ask for concentration. I ask you to remain in this spirit, to be able to open the heart and listen to the spirit of truth that from these pages, reveals itself, so that everyone can fill oneself with spirit and remain in God's heaven. The context of this passage is a context which brings us to the dialogue, between God and humanity, a lost humanity represented by this woman. But a humanity that God goes looking for, to be able to redeem it. And God recalls in this profundity humanity, which wants to welcome him, to renew that alliance pact, between God and his people. This relationship interrupted or ignored, must be the object of the restoration of all the children of God, who were entrusted to the woman of God, who had the task of announcing the new Jerusalem, the kingdom. The framework in which this dialogue takes place has some focal points, the first, the reference to the city of Sychar. Which brings us back to Shechem, the place of the choice. The place where Joshua gathered the people before entering the promised land and said, Choose today who you want to serve. Therefore it is the place where the people are called to renew their yes to God's call, after having traveled so much. And having done partly well and partly bad, the moment of the definitive choice arrives. And the people respond, Far be it from us to abandon the Lord to serve other gods. Therefore the first commandment returns to be the center of the people of God, who want to remain faithful to God, one, which will then understand to be triune. Another reference is that of Jacob's well, which provokes profound reflections. The well, is the place where, there is water, the water that gives life, which contrasts with a desert that often leads to death, physical death, for those men and for those animals, who without a well died. And therefore the well is that manifestation that brings you to live God, source of life, source of water, from which life flows. But the well is also the meeting place. The place of the falling in love. Let's think about the history of Jacob, who at the well meets she who would become his bride. Or Moses, that tired, him too. For vicissitudes which are well told in chapter 2 of the Exodus. Watershed moment in that man's life, holy, precursor of Christ. At that well he will meet she who then will become his wife. Here it is that in eschatology, we go to the wedding of the Lamb, who meets his faithful bride. To be able to bring everyone to life, eternal life. The well is of Jacob. And Jacob, we know that he gave origin to the twelve tribes of Israel, on which the first characteristic alliance is founded. And therefore we find those twelve in Jesus. The twelve apostles in the second covenant. And we find those twelve, in the stars that crown Mary's head which are the symbol and emblem of the third alliance. And Jacob is he, who also saw that golden staircase. And he saw it just before arriving at the well where he would have met his bride, these two moments are linked. One precedes the other. But we know that that golden ladder was revealed to the maiden of God. And it was seen present here in this cradle, in that revelation, the divine family and the golden ladder. Recounts Maria Giuseppina, to see a large staircase of very bright light, from which the Our Lady descends with the child in her arms. Our Lady says, the golden staircase is the passage between heaven and Jerusalem, where all the true children of God ascend. Souls incapable of doing good towards God cannot access it, and towards the next. Therefore, this projects us to the end times. To that connection between heaven and earth, where in the new Jerusalem, the kingdom manifests itself. Then there is another important reference, noon the evangelist tells us. This too gives rise to profound reflections. At noon the sun reaches its summit point. 
It is therefore, the sun that brings us back to Christ, at that moment reaches his highest manifestation. And in fact in this passage Jesus manifests himself to that woman. In that final step, that touches the heart, it is I, that is talking to you. But this summit point marks a fundamental transition, of life, or of death, of light, or darkness. Midday, takes us to that other noon, told in the Gospel of John where around midday, Pilate asks and he says to the Jews, Behold your king. He manifests him. And the Jews. Say, Away, away, and crucify him. And from that moment for the Jews. Begins the darkness. And in fact, the evangelist will say in another passage, from that moment the sun was eclipsed. From twelve to three, from the sixth to the ninth hour. Therefore, noon, manifestation of God, can be salvation, for those who welcome his manifestation, eternal life. And it can be condemnation, judgment. For those who refuse it, so, another watershed point. Then there is the reference to Jesus' thirst and tiredness. Jesus is thirsty. And this also takes us back to that last moment of his earthly life, when on Golgotha, before expiring and of therefore resurrecting, bringing everyone to salvation. He asks to drink, I am thirsty. Here is that God who is thirsty. And that asks to drink. And so this brings us to the moment of judgment, just as when the evangelist Matthew, in chapter 25, will say, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come and blessed of my father, receive as an inheritance the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. Because I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. And so this brings us back to the commandment of commandments, commandment of love. Love for God and above all love for the next. I am thirsty. And then he starts this dialogue, profound dialogue with this woman. That now we'll see as it unfolds. A heartfelt dialogue. A dialogue that sees Jesus breaking the schemes, he talks to a woman, and what's more, with a woman, that belongs to a people with whom there is no communion. Jesus breaks the schemes and goes beyond conventions. Love wins, every barrier that man has placed. Because Jesus wants to go and recover that lost humanity. Those who already feel full of themselves, those who already feel full of everything, don't need God. They do not feel the thirst for God. But Jesus wants to go and get those sheep, lost, just like this woman, who was in a situation of objective sin, she had no husband, even though she lived with a man. Jesus speaks to her. And he offers her an itinerary. An itinerary that if accepted would have led her to salvation. Here is the itinerary that Jesus makes this woman do in this dialogue. This dialogue begins with a peremptory invitation, give me to drink. This woman could have refused the dialogue. Just as when God calls you, you can say yes, you can say no. And sometimes the invitation is peremptory, it does not allow replication. That woman accepted, to talk and to start that itinerary. What is Jesus thirsty of? What is his thirst? Jesus is thirsty for love. Jesus thirsts for the hearts of his children. Jesus thirsts for the, yes, of his children. From that woman he wanted her heart and soul to be able to cleanse her. And so he does with each of us who accept to complete this itinerary. But one must be docile. And Jesus asks us, the yes. Jesus asks us, do of me what pleases you. Do my will. Here is the prayer of the Our Father. Here is the prayer of this maiden, I love you Jesus, I love you so much, I rely on you. Do of me what pleases you. Jesus is thirsty of this. This is what Jesus asks. We must give, if we truly want to be children of God. If we truly want to live communion with God. Here is that beggar of love, who manifests himself again, just as he manifested himself to that maiden in that revelation, you're one of the new era. Pray says Jesus.
Pray because your prayers immediately reach the heart of the Father. Pray because dawn and the sunset may soon be one. Open your hearts to the Lord. I am a beggar of love. Do not refuse this request of mine, because I no longer have time to open your hearts. I don't have time anymore, don't refuse this offer of the Son of God. To he who becomes a beggar for your salvation. Because then I will be king and judge. Come to my heart. Adore the heart of Mary and my Father, will forever be in your heart. Of this is thirsty Jesus, now as then. Here is the kingdom. In the moment one lets himself heal. In the moment one is reborn from above. In the moment in which, as Jesus told Nicodemus, the moment one is reborn from above, one sees the kingdom. Here is Mary's womb. That heart that must be worshipped that generated the kingdom. Which gave birth to the generation of saints. Who will let them know Jesus? Here are the new Christians called today, to give all of themselves for the love of their Jesus. Today, the Father places his seal of love, in the hearts of his children. To engrave his name in our hearts. His name is God. That name which is salvation, Jesus' source of life. John will say. Just beyond this step, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and exclaimed in a loud voice, Whoever is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from within him. Here is the, it is me who is talking to you. Is seen in substance of the Father, of every creature made in his image and likeness. Inexhaustible source of eternal love that will make us, as he is, many little Jesus es and many little Marias. To make us shine eternally in the firmament of God. Here are the new stars, called to shine, in this new firmament. Everything will pass fleeting loves, ephemeral loves, illusions. The word of God that was incarnated in history and that is, will not pass, but it will be accomplished. And will bring to eternal life all those who will want to complete this itinerary of love. And after this first passage, give me to drink. There is the heart of this page of the gospel. Believe me woman. Jesus opens himself. He opens his heart to that woman who had not refused the dialogue. The time has come when neither on this mountain, nor in Jerusalem, will one worship the Father. You worship what you don't know. We worship what we know. Because salvation comes from the Jews, but the time has come and it is this, in which the true worshippers, will worship the Father in spirit and truth, because the Father seeks such worshippers. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. There are many references here, profound. A first reference is a Trinitarian reference. Jesus again speaks in first person plural, we. And he manifests his Trinitarian essence. Here are the three messianic waves recalled. Which are embodied in history. But there is also a reference to the three alliances. You adore what you do not know. So there is a first reference. To that first alliance. When there was a division of the kingdom between the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah. And for the love of his servant David, God kept for himself a small part, a small remnant, the kingdom of Judah. This is why salvation comes from the Jews. First Alliance. But Jesus himself is a Jew, son of David. And the second is manifested in him, with the new alliance of Christians. But there is a third reference. Because the lion of the tribe of Judah will win, it is written in the Apocalypse. Do not cry, he will open the seal. And he will bring you to complete knowledge. Here is the third alliance that manifests itself thanks, to the lion of the tribe of Judah. And salvation comes from the Jews. Now God preserves this patch of land for himself. He preserved it for himself. Where neither the Sanhedrin nor the world will have authority over it. To establish his kingdom. Here is the sprout of David. 
That opens the book and the seals. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Here is the era of the Holy Spirit that on the stone near this little chapel, is written in fire. Era of the Holy Spirit. God is spirit. Just as Jesus told us. My words are spirit and life. The flesh is of no use. In the highest moment in which he manifested himself to his disciples. When he spoke of doing and being in communion. Spirit and life. The flesh is of no use. These words cannot be understood literally. But one must understand in the light of what is spirit. Here on this mountain, God is worshipped in spirit and truth. In spirit and life. Neither on this mountain, nor in Jerusalem, believe me woman. The time has come and it is this, where there is another mountain in which one must worship God in spirit and truth. Here is the third mountain, this mountain, which manifests the third alliance, that is now being lived. And then there is the last passage, of this excerpt. That seals the whole. It is I, that is talking to you. And in these words, Jesus manifests himself. Jesus manifests his being God. He does it in a foreign land. But he does it in front of a woman who has expressed willingness to listen to him and to follow him on this itinerary. This is what Jesus invites today to do. So that all those who want to follow him can understand him in his manifestation in this little cradle. Where he descended in spirit and truth to give us life. Who believes will be saved. Who doesn't believe, no. And what does the woman do? She immediately accepts the invitation and goes to the city to announce. And mind you, she announces with that equilibrium and prudence of who, goes. Maybe it could be him. She waits, that those inhabitants can experience firsthand. And in fact, shortly thereafter, those inhabitants will say, we believe, that he is the Messiah. But not because you told us. Because we have touched with hand. Here is the teaching that this woman also gives us after understanding that equilibrium, which gives everyone the time to understand what she has been able to understand over time. The teaching that Jesus gives is great, on this page of the Gospel. A sprout will spring up from the trunk of Jesse. A sapling will sprout from its roots, upon him will rest the Spirit of the Lord. The spirit of wisdom and intelligence, spirit of counsel and fortitude, spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. He will be pleased of the fear of the Lord and will not judge according to appearances. And won't make decisions based on hearsay. But he will judge the poor with justice and make fair decisions for the oppressed of the land. His word will be a rod that will strike the violent. With the breath of his lips he will kill the wicked. Sash of his loins will be justice. Belt of his hips, fidelity. Says Isaiah. Talking about what the Spirit would have done, settling. Here is God that manifests himself in spirit. We are on the holy mountain brothers. Here is the summit, where there is silence, peace and holiness. Where there is no void. But one experiences the fullness of God. An eternal fullness, of endless goodness. This is what belongs to all those who will know how to remain faithful. And they will be found faithful, until the end. As it is written in the last book, that sets the seal. The Spirit and the Bride say come. And whoever listens repeats, come. Whoever is thirsty, come. Anyone who wants can draw for free the water of life. And so be it.